everyone thought Musk was just bluffing when he announced the launch of the world's biggest rocket from the Starbase launch facility. Critics assumed it was all for media attention, doubting the Starship would ever leave the ground. But Musk proved them all wrong. SpaceX's ambitious Starship project represents a significant leap in rocket technology. As per the latest update, the company has been actively conducting tests on both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft at its Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Before we dive into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on Starship and SpaceX's other monumental achievements. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. Starship and Super Heavy Booster Tests The recent milestone involved a double test of engines on the Starship and Super Heavy rocket stages. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk shared on social media that the static fire test of Flight 3 Super Heavy Booster was successfully completed. This booster, serving as the first stage of the Starship rocket, is equipped with an impressive array of 33 Raptor engines, making it the world's largest and most powerful booster. In addition to the Super Heavy Booster test, SpaceX also conducted a separate test of one Raptor engine on the Starship Ship 28. This particular test aimed to showcase the Raptor engine's restart capabilities in space. The video shared by SpaceX revealed the ignition of a single Raptor engine on the Starship, simulating a flight-like startup for an in-space burn. Prototypes and Cryo-Thrust Simulator Testing Next week, Starship 30 and Booster 12 will be undergoing cryo-thrust simulator testing at Massey's test site. These two prototypes were moved to the Massey's yesterday. Cryo-thrust simulator testing is a crucial step in assessing how the rocket components perform under extreme cold conditions, simulating the challenges of space travel. Starship 29 was reported to have moved into Mega Bay 2, described as the first-ever Starship in the new Starship Assembly Bay. This signifies SpaceX's continued efforts to optimize and streamline the manufacturing and assembly processes for these massive rockets. Road Closures Updates Regarding the upcoming road closures, two closures are scheduled for January 3rd and January 4th. These closures were speculated to be associated with the rollback of Booster 10 from the built site to the launch site after final preparations. If this rollback happened as planned, that would be the final one for Booster 10 as next steps involves wet dress rehearsal and final launch preparations at the launch site. SpaceX's Starship test flights in 2023 SpaceX conducted two Starship test flights in 2023, both of which provided valuable insights into the development and challenges of the Starship system. The first test in April faced a significant setback when Starship and its Super Heavy booster failed to separate as planned. This led to SpaceX intentionally detonating the rocket four minutes after liftoff. The incident not only resulted in the failure of the test, but also caused damage to SpaceX's Starship launch pad, necessitating extensive repairs. The second test, known as Flight 2, demonstrated several successes, including a successful stage separation and a normal first stage engine burn. However, approximately eight minutes after liftoff, the Starship upper stage experienced an event triggering its automated flight termination system, leading to an explosion. The first stage also exploded shortly after stage separation. Future Launch Plans and Regulatory Compliance SpaceX's plans for the Starship program are contingent on regulatory approvals, and the company is likely working closely with the FAA to meet safety standards and address any concerns. The delay in obtaining a launch license underscores the importance of thorough regulatory compliance in the aerospace industry. In conclusion, SpaceX's progress with the Starship program is marked by both successes and challenges. The development of the world's largest and most powerful rocket poses technical and regulatory complexities, and the company continues to push the boundaries of space exploration with its ambitious goals for reusability and interplanetary travel. As we bring this year to a close with our final episode of the year, We've seen two orbital flight test attempts and a wide array of upgrades and repairs here at the production facility. And as exciting as it's been, we're looking forward to an even more spectacular new year here at Starbase. Concrete placement for the Star Factory expansion at the build site continues, and more concrete was placed for the next phase of the construction on Friday. While foundations are being poured for upcoming areas, steelwork continues on the current section. Exterior cladding installation continues on the first phase of the Star Factory Nosecone Assembly Hall, 
and once all the cladding is installed, the exterior section of the factory will be complete. A cryostorage tank from the dismantled air separation plant departed from the Sanchez site at Starbase, heading for parts unknown. Following booster tends tumultuous and aborted static fire test. The booster transport stand was relocated from its parking space at the launch site to the orbital launch mount just in case the booster needed to be taken off the OLM. The orbital launch mount work platform was brought back to the launch site as well, giving workers access to the underside of the launch table and booster. Early on Saturday morning, the booster transport stand was moved away from the launch mount and sent back to its parking spot near the D2 gate. A new sign bearing SpaceX's logo arrived at the launch site to be mounted on the beam above the D1 gate. Making use of a boom lift and telehandler, the contractors went straight to work installing the new signage, starting with the letter S, P, C, and E when and next as workers focused on getting the more regular shapes in place. The A and X were last and the sign was fully assembled in about six hours. After a few hours of wiring work, the new sign was turned on for the first time before shutting off for the night. Production equipment continues to be installed inside the Star Factory Nose Cone Assembly Hall. On Tuesday, one of the two likely flap support jigs was spotted. Next to the Nose Cone Welding Station. Back at the launch site, the chopsticks were taken out of the launch position for lowering. The ship quick disconnect arm was moved out of the way and the chopsticks were brought down to the hard stop at the base of the launch integration tower. Workers erected scaffolding at the base of Booster 10's liquid oxygen tank hatch, allowing workers to enter the tank for potential inspections, maintenance, or repairs. Several more truckloads of prefabricated steel sections and beams for the Star Factory expansion were delivered to the build site on Wednesday. Around the same time, a large base column was lifted and installed as the steel work continued. The upper section of the column followed suit an hour later, guided into place by iron workers to bring the new section of the assembly hall to its full height. Early Thursday saw the arrival of the booster thrust simulator as crews prepared to bring the next booster over to Massey's for cryogenic testing. Later that morning, the two-point ship lifting jig was relocated at the build site, heading down Remedios Avenue. We also saw a new Star Factory roof beam being lifted into place. These large roof-spanning beams are being installed across each column row as they're put and followed by the roof purlins. A new cryotank was delivered to the launch site as work continues to build out the replacement propellant storage system. After being driven into the launch complex, the new tank was moved into position, filling the gap between the other recently delivered storage tanks. Back at the ring yard, the booster thrust simulator and transport stand was moved in the Mega Bay 1. A little over four hours later, Booster 12 was lifted onto the thrust simulator stand for transport and testing at Massey's. On Saturday, over at Port Canaveral, after having launched Starlink 6-34 and completed stowage operations at the docks, Falcon 9 Booster 1081 was laid onto the horizontal transporter. Starlink Group 6-32 lifted off late that night, lofting 23 more V2 Mini. Starlink satellites into orbit on what would turn out to be Booster 1058's final flight. On Sunday, SpaceX support ship Bob returned to Port Canaveral with four fairing halves from the Starlink G6-32 and G6-34 missions. And now, they're preparing for a third launch, with Musk recently revealing the anticipated launch date, and it's sooner than you think. SpaceX's Starship represents a groundbreaking venture in space technology. Designed as the most powerful rocket ever built, it's a towering structure consisting of two reusable stages, the Super Heavy Booster, and the Starship spacecraft. Measuring an impressive 165 feet tall, Starship isn't just a rocket. It's the cornerstone of SpaceX's ambition to make space travel more accessible, and to eventually transport humans to the Moon and Mars. Starship's journey hasn't been without its challenges. It has undertaken two major test flights, each with its unique set of objectives and lessons. The first flight, which took off from the Starbase in South Texas, was aimed at sending the spacecraft around Earth, targeting a splashdown near Hawaii. However, it faced multiple issues, including engine failures and a failure in stage separation, leading to a controlled detonation. Despite this, SpaceX gathered valuable data to refine their design. The second test flight on November 18 showed significant improvements, the Super Heavy booster performed excellently and the separation process went smoothly. 
Yet, both stages met a fiery end with Super Heavy exploding during its return, and Starship following suit minutes after launch. After the first two test flights of the Starship, which ended in explosions but provided valuable data, SpaceX is now preparing for the third launch. This next step is crucial, as they are focusing not only on technological improvements, but also on meeting all regulatory requirements set by the Federal Aviation Administration or FAA. The FAA plays a vital role in overseeing investigations into the mishaps of previous flights and in granting the necessary launch licenses. Musk announced that the third flight of the SpaceX Starship should be ready for launch in three to four weeks from November 20, 2023. This announcement indicates that SpaceX is targeting a potential launch window in mid-January. However, the final launch date will also depend on obtaining the necessary launch permit from the Federal Aviation Administration. For the third launch, SpaceX's Ship 28 and Booster 10 have undergone significant improvements. Ship 28 has completed vital cryoproof tests and engine installations with more testing like a six-engine static fire planned. The new hot stage ring on Booster 10 represents an important upgrade. It addresses concerns from the second launch where the delay in separation and ineffective heat shielding might have contributed to the explosion. The updated hot stage ring aims to ensure a more efficient separation, reducing the risk of heat affecting the booster during ship firing. The upcoming launch is particularly significant because it will be the first time the new Raptor 3 engines are used. These engines have been designed to offer substantially more power and efficiency compared to their predecessors. The thrust capabilities of the Raptor 3 engines are notably higher than those of the Raptor 2. Achieving a chamber pressure of 350 bar, the Raptor 3 engines deliver an impressive 269 tons of thrust. This is a significant leap from the Raptor 2, which achieved around 230 tons of thrust. The increase in thrust is a critical factor in enhancing the Starship Super Heavy Booster's total thrust, positioning it to exceed the capabilities of historical rockets like the Saturn V. In addition to increased thrust, the Raptor 3 engines have undergone significant weight reduction and efficiency improvements. The evolution of the Raptor engines has consistently focused on removing unnecessary parts and reducing the overall weight, contributing to the enhanced performance of the Starship. The Raptor 2, for example, was already 20% lighter and 25% more powerful than the Raptor 1. Continuing this trend, the Raptor 3 likely experienced further weight reduction, thereby improving the efficiency and payload capacity of the Starship. The enhanced thrust and efficiency of SpaceX's Raptor 3 engines are poised to have a significant impact on the overall performance of the Starship, which is integral to NASA's Artemis missions. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member, so click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.